Well, welcome to everyone at St. David's today. You may be seated. It's May the 1st. Hard to believe. The choir is going to lead us in Detroit, entitled, Jesus, Stand Among Us. Christ is raised up. 
confession and the assurance of pardon are always a time for each one of us to draw close to God, to know that God is near us, with us, listening to us, in relationship with us. And so as we come to our prayers, keep these things in mind and open ourselves, let us open ourselves as God desires to show his love and give us his grace and peace. With this in mind, let us pray. And Lord, through the sunny days, and through the mossy days, through the windy days, through the cold days, we praise you. Lord, as we see many evidences of growth in the spring, colors of the earliest flowers, the birds building their nests, singing their songs so we come back to you the creator lord of heaven and earth and it seems every day lord that we hear more of what's being discovered in the vast universe as we get pictures from more and more light years away from us. We see the galaxies as never before in color. We see the expanse of space. We marvel at our own planet. We wonder for its health. We see the myriad forms of life in the earth and on the earth and in the air and in the sea and we are always drawn to that place of awe you know all these Lord and you know us too thank you that we can take these moments to draw back from all that we consider all the busyness of our lives and can come to you, into your presence, into your throne room. And there we can be honest with you of how our lives are going. There we can confess our sins to you and any rebellion or any unwillingness in our hearts and minds, any confusion or doubts. We simply thank you for this time of honesty with you, a space to confess our sins that we might know your assurance and your forgiveness on the other end and through the process to once again experience your love your kind eyes so we confess our sins to the Lord any attitudes or actions or inactions against your will and way we confess them now quietly sometimes don't even know where our hearts are and we acknowledge hardly even being able to keep our minds and hearts in the moment help us Lord as we seek to honor you with our very selves, with our thoughts with our reflections, with our lives with who we are Thank you that at the cross and the resurrection, Jesus Christ once again assures us of freedom, life, hope for more. And Lord, we say that prayer that's for this place and this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who need us not to take. 
temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The choir will now sing, God of love, God of peace, by Mozart.
girls, come on up to the front, please. Welcome. Nice to have you. How's everybody today? <coughs> good. I'm almost good, too. You do, did you have any time off that Easter time? Yeah. You go back tomorrow. Wow. Is, is that okay? But, 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 you'll be, but you'll be okay in the end, probably, anyway. Nice, nice to have you again. Now, when I say about Easter, you know Easter is a day. And do you remember what Easter is about? We, right on. When Jesus rose from the dead. And, and so we don't have to be af- afraid of death because Jesus rose from the dead and we can love and learn from Jesus. And did you know that, G- that Easter is more than a day? It's like Christmas is more than a day. It's a season. So we're in a whole season now because it takes more than just a day to celebrate. Uh, that, I don't know if that means that you get more chocolates though. Adults? Probably no, and probably and probably that's it <laughs> for the for the for the chocolate season. But it's uh, we still have the sweetness of knowing Jesus through through the whole time. So let's have a prayer together and pray that God will help us understand more about who He is. Can you say the prayer after me, please. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who teaches us about life and shows us life and how to live. Help us follow him and give our lives to him. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you guys. There we are. And as they go out, Sarah is going to come and, and read for us. I think I might just stay here. I don't know. Okay, sure. I'm abiding for a moment. Okay. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 14a, and then continuing on with verses 22 to 32 on page 1,621. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, foreseeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers and sisters, we all know that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witness of the fact. The second reading is from 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9, on page 1,809. 
And I think it's actually on page 1,805. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you gen greatly rejoice, so now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Friends, let's turn over to uh, Psalm... 16, where we will read responsively Psalm 16, found on page 813. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I save the godly who are in the land. They are the noble people in whom is all my delight. You have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Therefore, my heart is glad. And my tongue rejoices, my body also will rest secure. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And then the Gospel, John chapter 20. Verses 19 to 31, a passage that looks through Easter evening and then goes on to the week after Easter, which is today. John 20, verses 19 to 31, which is on page 1616. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail prints, the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with, with, with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word. Let us sing together, Now the Green Blade Rises, 256, 256. Peace 
and knowing that you have conquered death. Mercy as we seek to continually know you and be transformed in light of who you are in our lives. Here in this place, across the city, across the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it was a week and a weekend that was almost too much to take in. Something like this weekend, I suppose, in week, at least for me, at the royal wedding. Anybody watch that on Friday? You've heard about that, hey? And with the federal election tomorrow, you've heard about that too, probably? I was in Toronto on Monday and Tuesday on my shortest trip ever with the Bible Society. Uh, the Holocaust service today at 2 p.m., the flipper dinner on Wednesday night. People go to that? Yes. The flipper dinner, yes, you go to that. And then we had phyllo pastry, uh, salmon phyllo pastry, good companions on Thursday. It was quite a week, quite a week. And on top of that, did you know the King James Bible is celebrating its 400th anniversary? Did you know that? 1611 it was translated. And that tomorrow, in honor of this, the Bible will be read, the entire Bible will be read in 400 seconds simultaneously to honor that 400th anniversary. Now you ask, how can that be done? Well, everybody who knows about this over the internet, they choose an hour, you get a passage, and everybody within that, what is that, five or six minutes, reads the passage out loud all together across the planet and in 400 seconds, the whole entire Bible is read out loud. Well, that's a lovely thing, I think. So it's quite a week. This has been quite a week, and it's not stopping. But, of course, when I say it was quite a week, I'm not referring just to this week, but I'm referring to the week and weekend of the first Easter. Hopes and the dreams of the followers of Jesus had gone up in smoke on that Good Friday. The hopes and dreams of so many were burned on that day he was tortured to death. Burned by some of those closest to Jesus, like Judas who betrayed him and Peter who denied him. Everything that had been placed in Jesus' hands seemed to evaporate on that first Good Friday. But then the shock of the third day was the greatest surprise in all history. Proper historians of the day would never have recorded that it was only the women who got the message first because that in itself would have discounted the veracity and historicity of what actually happened. But the gospel writers wrote what happened regardless of that. And Jesus chose to talk to the women first. Now why was that? Was it because he knew they would be most responsive? Was it because they were with him to the bitter end, many of them at the foot of the cross? We don't know all the reasons why, but they got the good news first. And they were asking, and everyone was asking on that third day afterwards, could it be, could Jesus actually beat death and open up a new life gate? Could it be that Jesus would become the firstborn from the dead, leading all who trust him to life beyond this life? Could sane people believe this? And yet here they were, experiencing it firsthand. Not just one or two who could be dismissed as having delusions, but over 500 witnesses, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. And John gives us, if you will, the more intimate accounts. He gives us the evening news from the Easter Sunday, then a week later on the second Sunday of Easter, which is today. He continues his account, moving from Mary Magdalene, announcing she has seen the Lord, to an unidentified room somewhere in the city. We find the disciples of Jesus together, at least the ten apostles, the twelve minus Judas minus Thomas, but including many other disciples there, locked up together. Then Jesus transports into the room, though it is locked. Now I say transports, whereas the text says, came and stood among them, without using the door. We know that Jesus has a physical body because he lets people see him and touch him. We don't know exactly what the wounds which he had had experienced from his torture looked like. The piercings in his hands and his sides were there, likely scars that were healed, but we don't really know. We also don't know the overall exact look of the body 
particularly the face, because Mary, who heard him and saw him first in the garden, did not recognize him. Remember, she thought he was the gardener. So we conjecture that there is some disconnection between what we will look like in this, what we look like in this life and what we will look like in the next. However, there is also enough connection between what we look like in this life and what we will look like in the next that we will be able to recognize one another. Mary recognizes Jesus as he calls her by name. Jesus calls each one of us by name as well. The question is always whether we will acknowledge relationship with Jesus Acknowledge Jesus as God the Son who brings life. He is still calling us as he was speaking to his own friends the night of the resurrection and the week after. I believe there is dis a discontinuity between our present bodies and the resurrection bodies which we will all have, all who trust Jesus, because there will be a change in physics. Just as angels and the Lord himself could go through walls and lock doors, so we will be able to transport ourselves in a manner different than our current capabilities. But even though he can go through our suspicion just as well as through locked doors, Jesus can go through our disbelief and our trust. Even though he can, he chooses to make his case to us as he did to his disciples long ago, to win us over, if you will, with his love and his words. He brings peace to those who welcome him. Peace be with you, shalom, the wholeness of health and life, well-being, all in that word. Then John records Jesus breathing on them as a prophetic act of their receiving the Holy Spirit. He commissions them to tell the story of the good news, to bring others to follow Jesus, and that there is real power in telling the story. Knowing and trusting Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins has been placed in our hands, in the church's hands. Although God could simply make everyone see all at once, and we can even imagine it quite easily in a kind of a worldwide television broadcast, or even, you know, doesn't, he doesn't need a screen. He could just project it into our consciousness, if you will. Yet, he chooses not to do that. He chooses to use you and me. And when you and I explain the story to someone and they receive it, their sins are forgiven. And when you, someone hears the story and says, I don't believe it, I don't want anything to do with that, then their sins are not forgiven. That's why I say there's real power in our explaining and sharing the good news about Jesus Christ. And it matters if you do so. Thomas is a case in point. His honesty puts him in that unforgiven category. He says he won't believe. He won't believe. Unless. And then he says he needs to feel the places where Jesus was pierced. And we know the end of the story, and we know he gets his chance to actually touch the Lord. And I love Thomas, and I hope you know that by now, um, it, simply because we only have these little vignettes of him in John 14, where he says, Lord, I don't, you know, how do we know the way to get to your great reunion? And he says, I don't, you know, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Thomas is honest. So I like to think of him as honest Thomas more than doubting Thomas. That's just me. But he does speak up here. He did so earlier in the upper room and he's doing it again. We don't know why he wasn't with the others the first time Jesus appeared to them. But we do know Jesus comes to see him and he is reinstated in his relationship with the Lord. He honestly brings his doubts before God. I think that's something Jesus invites us all to do. We are invited to bring our doubts to God. Then as God answers him, he moves into worshiping the Lord. Notice he changes from his stubbornness and his unwillingness to believe to worship. This is such a crucial passage for so many things, certainly for the divinity of Christ. There's no other honest way to interpret this passage except that Jesus is God. Thomas addresses him in verse 28. He says, My Lord and my God. This is... This not only speaks to the divinity of Christ, it also speaks of Thomas' personal commitment to Jesus. But then, Jesus speaks to each one of us. And he says, blessed are you who haven't seen and yet have believed. 
It's kind of a resurrection beatitude, if you will, encouraging all of us who have not had that experience that Thomas had to carry, and yet carry the doubts or concerns that Thomas did have. It's an, an invitation to worship the Lord, as Thomas did. Then the apostle speaks to each one of us in the narrator's voice. He says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So really, after you read those words or hear them anew, it's just a question of saying yes in your heart and your mind, or no. Now's the time to follow Jesus with our whole heart. Wherever we go, whether it's to the polling stations tomorrow, to your place of work, where you find your recreation, to your homes, in your reflections when you're alone, in your head space and heart space, that's the time to say yes. And as we say yes again to Jesus, we experience anew the power of the resurrection life and the wisdom to live that life. Of course, we need each other in this walk of faith and trust in God. We need to also be continually reading scripture, praying, worshiping with music, and with our attitudes. All of us are on this journey. But as we do so often on Sundays, we simply pause a moment and reflect on where we are in our hearts so that we might commit again ourselves to the risen one who is with us. With this in mind, let us pray. And so, Lord, we do take a moment right now to express that yes to you in our hearts and minds or to express those reservations, doubts, confusion, to say, as the one man in the gospel said, Lord, I believe, help me when I interact with my unbelief. Give us, Lord, not only the courage to express our difficulties, confusion, doubts, but also the courage to listen and to receive and to be actively seeking the answers. Thank you for your voice and your recorded message in the scriptures that we have enough. Although we don't understand all the mysteries of this life, we have enough to believe. Thank you for that. Thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Lots going on in the church. Uh, you'll find it in the bulletin on the right-hand side and on the back of the uh, catechism question that we did earlier. Uh, there is a youth conference coming and um, we really do need billets. Uh, we haven't had many yet uh, from here. So if you would consider now that we're getting within two weeks of that time and there are at least 80 coming from away, flying in, uh, we really would appreciate, even if you've got floor space, uh, some sense of uh, what you can offer and whether you say it to me or you call or email Stephanie King there or the church office uh, either here or at St. Andrews you have lots of venues but please we would really appreciate your helping us out when this youth conference that's coming um, the uh, 13th to the 15th of May also there's a number of things a session is earlier this, this month and it is on Tuesday please don't forget 
there's lots of thanks in the in the bulletin there. To, thanks to those who helped out the flipper dinner uh, to make it the success it was. I said thanks to Alexandra for helping me with the music last week. I forgot to say thank you. Um, music. Uh, that, by the way, that sermon. Somebody asked me. So, was, so does that? What does that take to you? I say, well, that takes a lot longer actually <laughs> to go through uh, hundreds of uh, things of music than what I usually take for uh, what I do. Anyway, there you go. Uh, the garage sale is coming. That's this. That's this Saturday, isn't it? So uh, be aware of that. And today is Cemetery Fund Sunday, where we uh, give uh, some money towards our part in upkeeping uh, the cemetery. So if you would like to give money to that, there are envelopes in the pews, so please uh, give generously as you are moved in that regard. I think that's probably all the announcements. Did I miss anything else? That we, oh, the theme tea is coming too, don't forget that, but that's in two weeks. Two Saturdays. We give to God now our gifts, tithes, and offerings that the ushers would come forward. We uh, have a chance to give for God's way and will here. The ushers would come forward. Egypt, 
many other places in the world uh, continuing needing our prayers Libya uh, Syria, Jordan uh, on and on we've mentioned also other areas in Africa, Sudan uh, Liberia Congo, many, many places across the face of the earth that need our prayers I always leave time for you to add your prayers uh, also for mercy on our country as we uh, go to the polls and choose our own leadership democratically as well. So, with this in mind, let us pray. And Lord, we come to you, the living one, to once again receive the life that we need from you. We thank you, Lord that we can come to you, that we have the strength this day, the health, the will to be here, whether it's our first time here or whether we've been here many, many years. Thank you for your many mercies to us and to our families. Thank you for caring about us even more than we care for ourselves and our families. And Lord, there are many things in our hearts and minds we'd ask, we would add our blessing and our uh, desire of your hand of blessing on uh, Kate and William. Thank you for that positive event where the world focuses its attention on something other than disaster and pain and suffering, but rather on hope for the future and the next generation. Be with those countries that are struggling those places which are healing and continue to, need to do so and need to do so. Places we've even forgotten, perhaps from the news, like the earthquake, uh, the earthquakes in Chile. Lord, you know us and our world. You know those who are struggling after losing loved ones in tornadoes in the States. Be with them. Comfort them. Use your church to help rebuild. And help us, Lord, as we seek to honor you as we go to vote tomorrow. Lord, we know that all of us in the end will face you with our decisions in this life. And so as we do, we trust you for making Canada a better place than it is today. And for leadership that would follow along the lines that would be pleasing to you. Lord, we take a quiet moment just to intercede for other needs, for those experiencing loss, for those who need spiritual life, for those who are confused and depressed and lonely. We take a quiet moment to pray for them right now. Lord, you know all their needs. 
mercifully move your hand of care and love and help us we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Closing hymn is Now let the vault of heaven resound when we sing the hallelujahs together which just means praise the Lord in Hebrew 255 255 